Hi, welcome back to Detailing World. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the range of Marilex sprayers. So they have kindly sent over a whole bunch of these. So we've got the Industry Ergo, which are the Alka range, and also the Acid range. And we've also got the Axel Foma range as well, which are the, obviously the ones that foam up really, really well. And these ones we're gonna be focusing on more so today. So we're gonna be taking a quick look at those. First look, I've not even had a chance to test these out. Before I get too far into this, I just wanna say this is all gonna be taking place in the garage today. You can possibly hear the rain. We've got Storm Dennis passing through. Um, so yeah, it's not gonna be the great usual shots on the car. We've just got a test bonnet in here and we're just gonna be testing all these products against that. So yeah, with that bit said and out of the way then, on first impressions, these feel solidly built, like the handle, the grip, everything about them feels absolutely rock solid. Um, look forward to testing these, I've not tried them at all yet, they are bone dry inside, I've not put any products through. On the Acid and Alka range, I'm just going to probably put through a, um, an all-purpose cleaner, just compare them against the more generic ones, so this is something you might get from a garden centre, Wilco, something like that. Uh, I've got this one here as well from local motor factors designed for brake fluid, clutch cleaning and all of that kind of stuff. And another generic one, a um, bit more robust than the green top one, again from somewhere like B&Q or something, I can't remember exactly where it came from, um, but they just have all purpose cleaner in. So yeah, but today's focus is mainly going to be on the FOMA range, so uh, we'll go through some of the features of these. So the first thing I noticed when getting these out of the box is how well built they feel. They feel absolutely rock solid, like every confidence of that being fully loaded. This isn't gonna come apart from the body or anything like that. It feels absolutely sturdy as you like. Uh, so a couple of, the, couple of the features of these. On the top, we've got a cap here, and inside this, as standard, is another fan. So these, all these nozzles are adjustable and you can change this tip out here for something with a wider fan. So if you want a wider spray pattern, I believe that's what that is for. And then on the back, and this is more so on the foam range because, well, yeah, you're gonna use that to get the foam. The clip comes off the handle and in there you can see some nozzles. I'll run some close-ups in a moment. But basically, if we take these out quickly, we've got those there. So the dark blue one is for really thick foam. The light blue, I believe there's a light blue in already a standard. The light blue is for medium foam, and the white one is for a bit of a looser kind of foam. I'm going to stick for the time being with the light blue, which is kind of like the average level of foam. Can hear that rain coming down now. Hopefully the microphone's not picking too much. But moving on to the acid and the alka range, and the black tops are the acid range, and these come with the Viton O-rings, the green O-rings inside the nozzles as well. You also get um, a serviceable kit as well, so if you do ever need to change those, you can. Whoo, listen to that rain. Uh, on the Alka range, and this applies to the foam range as well, or the foamer, you get the blue EPDM O-rings in there. Um, again, all of these, I assume because obviously they make the same tops regardless of the bottle, they all come with these removable clips on the handle to store any extra nozzles, foaming attachments, anything like that so that's quite handy so another cool thing that i noticed then is with these if you wanted to adjust the direction of the spray so that's at a slight angle at the moment you can just loosen off the nozzle a tad take the cap and use it almost as like a screwdriver i'm doing this like one-handed for the camera just bear with me a sec so if you hold on to the nozzle you can then adjust the direction of the fan basically so now i've tightened that back up that's going to go perfect up and down so yep you can cover the car nicely that way so finally before we get on to the test thing because i know that's what you're here for rather than just watching me talk to the camera is it applies to all of these as i say they feel really well built but all of these do have a lock position so press the button push that forward and that will lock it a nice easy to reach with your thumb pressure release valve there and they all the, the action on them your knuckles aren't going to be smashing also, they work upside down as well, which I will be testing if we, apologies for that on the uh, microphone there. Basically, you can see there's a weight at the bottom of this here. So if that's upside down, that will drop to the head of the bottle and still obviously get access to whatever solution is inside. So yeah, with all of that said, let's move on to the test panel. So in here, I've just put a snow foam at a 10 to one mix. We've got two liters of water 
to 20 mil of product. Doesn't require many pumps actually, so I think we're about it at that. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, give this a try. Okay, so to say this is the first time I've tried these then, this is as the pumps came straight out of the box. So we'll just spin you around and uh, let's have a look how this compares. So at the moment, this is the standard nozzle that's put in here along with, I didn't show you this earlier, but this is where you change the attachment for the, how thick you want your foam. So that will pop out. It's probably under pressure at the moment. So I'm not gonna move that out there. Um, but that is the average um, nozzle, the light blue one. So yeah, let's see how this looks. So by no means is that a replacement for a snow foam lance. However, if you are in a pinch, that would of course work quite well actually. I mean, it starts off really well as you can see here. And then as it starts to lose pressure, it starts spitting out. Um, as I said, the snow foam has been mixed at a 10 to one. So that's two liters of water to 20 mil of product, just as I would in a snow foam lance. Let's pressurize this back up and uh, see how it ends up looking. I mean, the fan pattern there, quite nice, quite even coverage. It only takes you a couple of passes to cover this bonnet. Oh, is it going to make it? It's not. There we go. So, <laughs> yeah, on first impressions, that's nice. Uh, let me try it with the white nozzle. So, I'll come back to you in a sec. So, yeah, let's release the pressure then. Um, take off the nozzle on the front. I and mean, you just want to remove this here. So let's see, I can just pop that out. There we go. And remember in the cap, they do come um, sort of bubble wrap, not bubble wrap, blister, blister packed uh, in a pack um, from new. And come on, all three nozzles out. So we'll just pop the white one and that is, as I said, that's supposed to be a looser foam. So uh, we'll see if that helps uh, get slightly better coverage. I don't know if the, if the foam is struggling, so maybe just dial back the dilution. So let's pressurize it again. I'm back on camera, so yep, let's uh, try it this time. Yeah, a couple of cheeky pumps there, but that does kind of help it come out better. You know, it's I gave it one or two pumps there, um, but instantly that's lasted longer. Granted, it's a thinner foam pattern, foam coverage rather, and there we go. Um, but yeah, there's a lot less struggling going on with the uh, with the pressure washer. And finally, we'll give this a rinse off and we'll try it on the thickest. Um, on the thickest foam nozzle and see how we get on with that. So yeah, once again, just show you what I'm doing. Um, take the nozzle off and then we'll pop out the white foamer. And the dark blue one gives the thickest foam. I honestly think the uh, the gun, the bottle, whatever we're calling this, sorry. Uh, I think it may struggle. I think this is gonna be a challenge. Let's pressurize that. Oh, there we go go and let's uh yeah let's go again so yeah as i said this is the dark blue one it's supposed to give thick foam um i've got a feeling it's probably going to get like halfway maybe all the way until it starts struggling and spitting out so let's go almost instantly <laughs> kind of struggling to generate um go on i'll tell you what that is that is thick. And I know I'm spraying a bit erratically now. That, my friends, there we go, is rather thick. We're not seeing much. We're not seeing much there. Uh, sliding down, that is on there well and truly thick. If you can see that. 
Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, zoom back out, let's just have a look down the bottom. As you see, really, it's not reached the bottom yet. It's not coming off just quite yet. Say that one more time. That is super thick. Let me just take you off here. We'll have a quick zoom in. So as you can see, that's coming off as thick as you'd probably like it to come out. It's just kind of struggling, really. So you would be pumping a lot. A, a bigger pump with more capacity would probably last longer. Just give you a bit of an idea there how thick that is. So what I'm going to do now then is I'm going to decant this into a regular foamer, one of the other Marilex ones without the foaming heads, and just see how it compares and how a snow foam product would normally come out of a regular sprayer without the, uh, without the foaming nozzle. So uh, yeah, let's give that a try. So I just realised after I decanted it from one bottle to this one, I didn't actually need to decant it into it. I just needed to swap the head, but hey ho. Um, yeah, so we are now on the industry alka this is got the same seals different kind of nozzle head here inside this cap they do supply you with another nozzle which has got a smaller diameter i might give that a switch over so let's just pull that to one side but yeah i'm just going to compare this against the foamy one see what kind of difference it makes as i said this shouldn't foam so i'd be interested to see how snow foam is going to come out of this it maybe that ends up clogging up the end or something i uh, not quite sure so yeah let's have a look here we go again so as i said this is the industry alka uh non-foaming uh non-foaming pump sprayer so yeah let's go and there we go <laughs> it comes out as you kind of expect no foam whatsoever and we'll cut that out of that so, yeah i'm not even going to try the other nozzle <laughs> It really doesn't apply or create any foam at all. So that is literally just good for applying maybe traffic film removers or purpose cleaners, possibly tar removers. I'm not quite sure, but that may work. Yeah, anything that doesn't generally require um, a foam to be produced, as I say, all purpose cleaners realistically probably going to be the main thing as a, as a car detailer that you're going to put into this obviously these products can be used for things such as you know weed killing things around the house and the garden as well they're not just for car users um, but yeah obviously if you're watching this you're probably into your detailing so yeah your main use is really going to be an all-purpose cleaner or a tfr going in here um, so yeah next up i'm going to also try a wheel cleaner there's a, a wheel cleaner i really want to try um we'll get on to that next right so in here then we've got two liters of water i was only wanting to make a liter up um but i've not got the markings that go down to one liter so that's at two mil two mil of wheel shampoo it's the garage therapy wheel shampoo so very thick what i need to try and do here now to get this out let's try and pop some of this water There we go, pop some water into there to help the rest of that shampoo just come out. And we'll do that one more time. Final time, as I say, no, I'm not adding any extra products, I'm just like run, rinsing out this uh, syringe, basically. Uh, one thing I mentioned, forgot to mention, I know I said these were worked upside down, but they got no weight on the end, so the foamers don't actually work upside down um but hey ho you're probably going to be using it on wheels and lower parts where you're not going to be putting upside down anyway so yeah if you've been watching the channel for a while you know i do like the garage therapy wheel shampoo um i like the idea of it i just find it a bit strange using a wheel shampoo out of a bucket as opposed to normal wheel cleaners that come in trigger sprays um but it is a very very nice product to use when I use it in a bucket, I use 20 ml of product into two liters of water, which makes that, um, I believe a thousand to one, or is it a hundred to one? 20 up to, into, into what, into what, into what? 20 liters of, yeah, 20 ml of product into 20 liters. So I just fill the bucket of water up. 
yeah, that's a thousand to one. I'm sure there is. I'll correct it if I'm wrong on screen, but I'm sure that's a thousand to one. So keeping at that same ratio, I've got two liters in here. So yeah, just take a zero off the end. So rather than 20 liters, it's two liters. And rather than 20 mil, there is two mil. So it's the same concentration, but rather than ending up tipping 18 liters down the drain along with 18 mil of product, I may as well, uh, yeah, try and save as much. I know I should do a bit for the environment as well. So I'm gonna see how well this foams. Sorry about the traffic noise. Whilst that uh, ambulance goes past, I'm just gonna change the nozzle back to the medium one because I think it's still got the thickest in. So yeah, back onto the blue medium nozzle. Don't worry, this has all been cleaned out, rinsed through, so there's no uh, snow foam left in this. Let's pressurize this back up and get onto the panel. So yeah, this is the Marilex Axle Foamer again um, with the medium foaming nozzle inside. And we are testing a wheel cleaner here. As I said, two liters of water with two mil of wheel cleaner. Let's see how this goes. So with the medium nozzle, not what I expected. Let me put in the uh, dark blue nozzle and we'll try again. So take two, back onto the dark blue nozzle, the higher foaming one. Um, got a little bit there from the medium, so let's try it with the uh, dark blue one. You know what, I'm quite happy with that. See, I'm actually, as that's it, I'm quite happy with that. Um, yes, it's not foamed up like a snow foam, it's, but I can see all the suds on the panel there. If I just spin you about round, I'm not sure if you can quite see the suds there. But yeah, rather than using the product in a, uh, in a bucket with 20 litres of water, as I say, um, and then just end up tipping most of it down the drain afterwards, it's a bit more efficient to use it in this. Um, what I'll do, let me just wipe a bit of that off. I'll just grab this towel rather than taking the panel back outside. So let's just wipe some of this off. And let's get a, uh, let's pick a random wheel cleaner. In fact, I'll pick two wheel cleaners to show I'm not biased. So we've got the Carchem Alloy Clean. And where's the one I was using last week? We've got the Dodo Juice Mellow Yellow. So let's just spray these on, just give you an idea of how a you know, a traditional standard type wheel cleaner in a trigger bottle would fit on a, on a panel like this. So obviously we've got the garage therapy on that side through the Marilex sprayer. So this is the uh, car chem trigger. You know, kind of similar kind of results really. It's not massively foaming. And then the uh, Dodo Juice Mellow Yellow. Put this on the top. If I turn the nozzle on that is, wider spray pattern than the car chem one, but again, it's a similar kind of, you know, I'm not sure what distribution, I guess. It's just suds on the uh, paintwork here. You know, it's, it's slick. Oh, it's very slick. So, yeah, I think you could use it as a wheel cleaner. Uh, it's ideal use, really, is going to be the snow foam. Sorry to interrupt, so if you do follow me on Instagram, you'll notice I posted a picture of this with the bottle of Garage Therapy wheel shampoo next to it. Um, one of the guys from Garage Therapy commented on it, saying they recommend 10 mil of product into um, 500 mil of water. Let me just double check that's correct, actually. One second. Yeah, so they recommend 10 mil of product into 500 mil of water. So as I said, I typically use 20 mil into 20 liters of water so I was testing, you know, thinking try the same dilution ratio in a sprayer. And as you've seen, didn't really get much foam, but it looks like most of the wheel cleaners. Yeah, I've seen all the other YouTubers getting foam and a bit of a tricky one, really. I didn't really want it to be spluttering. So if you have seen like Specky McSporrens or Paul Dolden Details, they do it. And the snow foam, well, the, the foam sprayer struggles to pump it out. A bit like it did with the snow foam earlier, actually. So I didn't want that. So what I've done, because I barely used any earlier and I had nearly two litres in here, at that rate, what they're saying is 10 mil per 500 mil of water, that would be 40 mil of product into two litres of water. However, I have just added another 18 mil of product. So in here now is about 20 mil of product 
give or take maybe a tad less, like half a mil less. Um, so there's, you can hear Storm Dennis. So yeah, there's 20 mil of product in two liters. So I'm using half the amount Garage Therapy themselves recommends. Remember they said 10 mil per 500 mil, half a liter. So multiply that by four, that should be 40 mil into two liters. I've just tried it on one wheelie bin. I have literally tidied up this garage. Um, this is like two hours or so after shooting. Uh, so yeah, anyway, I just wanted to interrupt you and quickly show you what 20 mil of product into two liters looks like. So yeah, let's zoom in on this wheelie bin. So here we go then, we're on the Axel Foamer 2000. So there's two liters water in here with 20 mil of product. We are on, just to show you, the thick uh, spray attachment. Sorry, that's out of focus. Uh, so we're on the thickest here. And uh, yes, yeah, so pressurized up, there we go. And uh, that is more like what I was expecting. So yeah, you can see it just there behind me then. Uh, that is more like what I was expecting really. And uh, oh, let's do it again. I do like that. I can see me using that on the wheels just like that. So that is actually 20 mil of product into two liters. And you know what? That, that is about as much as I would use on an alloy wheel typically. That is gonna last a long time. So although I'm using the same as I would in a 20 liter bucket, I can then just put this away, depressurize it, put it away until the next wash. Um, so I'm not gonna be throwing that away. So. Yes, it's a much stronger mix, technically speaking. It's 20 mil into two liters rather than 20 mil into 20 liters. So it's, you know, 10 times stronger basically. But I'm not throwing it all down the drain at the end. You know, you've got to empty your buckets. So doing my bit for the environment and all of that jazz. This is not a garage therapy video, by the way. This is a Marilex sprayers video. So uh, yeah, let's get back into the main action. So now we're back onto the regular kind of sprayers, if you will. So we've got the industry acid here. It's got all purpose cleaner in it, but the difference between the acid and the alcohol is basically, other than the color of the top, is the color and the makeup of the O-rings inside. Um, so the acid has the Viton O-rings, the green ones, and the alka has the blue EPDM, if I remember correctly, O-rings. Um, you can get servicing kits as well to replace the O-rings as I mentioned earlier. I'm going to compare against this one, so out of the three generic pump sprays I've got, this I feel is probably the best of the bunch. Uh, we'll quickly look at this one, just compare it to the Marilex. So as I said, the Marilex feels very, very solid. This one feels nice, but as you're putting pressure in, you can see the join all along here, the plastic. It feels like it had split, in fact. In fact, that is moving, so there is, oh, that's just cracked there, so there is some flex in that. Triggers, so there, and then push forward to lock it. This one is pretty much the same, so that's kind of, that's got a bit more grippy. They're about the same on the pump spray, so you don't smash your knuckles on each, so that's a draw. Pressure relief, bit weird on this one, it's a wheel type thing. Here, again, it's a button that you can easily reach with your thumb whether you're left-handed or right-handed. I'm right-handed, it's a bit trickier with your right hand. If you're left-handed, nice and easy. But anyway, it'd be nice in fact, yeah. That's just me being ultra picky, ignore me. And then obviously both got adjustable nozzles on the front. This one comes with a changeable nozzle if you want a, I think it's a wider orifice, I can't remember now. Let's have a quick look. Oh no, this one, in fact, comes with a fan adapter if you want to have it fanned out rather than radial spray uh, and this one both of you adjust them for how wide and narrow you want the uh, jet to be so oh and this one you can work upside down apparently this one you can't we'll test that first let's go so generic sprayer upside down there we go that's pretty much died Marilex sprayer upside down Oh, it's just going to keep on going for days until it runs out of pressure. <laughs> so both of these have got uh, the same product in. I've actually just decanted some out of this into this one. They're both a 10 to 1 all-purpose cleaner mix. Um, so yeah, let me just wipe the panel down again. 
to do a 50-50, but really, they're probably going to spray almost the same, but we'll uh, have a quick gander. That one did look a little bit better, actually, so one second. Right, so we'll go with the Marilex sprayer first on the left. Get that last bit out. Nice big wide fan there. Let's see what it looks like if I just adjust that. So yeah, you can have it a bit more precision. Right down to a point. Let's get it back to wide open. Massive fan area. And that actually, as I said, this is the exact same product come out of this bottle. So now we'll just test this bottle. That's on probably its widest. Let's get a bit more precision, a bit more of a jet. And that's a jet. So I'll say they're gonna spray about the same. The Marilex seems to have got much better coverage. Let me uh, keep going with this generic one. Spray that out a bit. What you're actually finding as well is the Marilex, well, I don't know if it's because it's got more air in it or something, or if it's sort of, it has sort of like created some more suds. It seems to be clinging along, it's just dripping straight down on this side. So just look at the Marilex one more time. The way that's coming out, it's just, it, it is the exact same product. I've pretty much just run out in the Marilex. You might be able to see in there, I don't know. It's pink and it's pink. They're both the exact same all-purpose cleaner. I am actually shocked at what a difference that's made. So there we have it then, that's that. Um, honestly, the foamer, I kind of knew what to expect with that. I was expecting it to be foamy. I expected it to struggle on the dark blue one. I've seen enough videos. Specky, I think he did it, and Paul Dolden. And it just spl splutters out, basically. So that either means you just need a weak mixture, or, yeah, it's probably better suited for weaker snow foams, I think. But that'll be getting some playing about with over the, the next coming weeks and months. But what really impressed me is the industry sprayer. I mean, how this you know compared against just the more generic one like that i just kind of i can't get my head around it it's uh, y you've seen it yourself the, the old purpose clean i can see on the bonnet now it's still on that side that this was sprayed on it's been there about five minutes um yeah and you just think something like all purpose cleaner i just think well it's only all purpose cleaner spray it on but my god that made such a difference they also do let me just uh, dash off camera and just get it a sec they also make smaller ones as well, so it may be worth considering upgrading some of your regular spray bottles with these. Again, not had a chance to test this today. I'm uh, yet again kind of rushing a video on another stormy day. I just want to get out of this garage before these storms hit. Uh, I've got products all over the garage floor now, plastic tiled floor, and it's slippy as anything down there. So I do need to clean up now. So yeah, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that like button. If you're not subscribed to the channel already, please do consider subscribing. Also follow us on Instagram as well, at Detailing World Official. If you wanna see all the behind the scenes, all the setup and everything of things like this, you can follow me as Randomly Set. Also leave a comment below on what you think of these. Have you used these? Have you used anything similar to this? Or do you just use a regular standard, you know, DIY garden shop variety kind of uh, pressure sprayers? So yeah, let us know below. And uh, hopefully we'll see you in the next video.